Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The negative of zero is equal to zero. Now, in this series, we are using a list of 10 axioms for the real number system. And I'll leave that list of axioms in the description of the video below. Now, in this video, we are going to be using the following axioms. We have axiom four, which tells us that there exists a real number, which we call zero, that has the property that x plus zero equals x for all real numbers x. And axiom five tells us for all real numbers x, there exists a real number, which we call the negative x, that has the property that x plus the negative x is equal to zero. Now, we're also going to be using a property that we have proven, which is the cancellation law of addition. We have proven for all real numbers a, b, and c, if a plus b equals a plus c, then b is equal to c. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, we first note by axiom four, we have that this statement works for every real number. So in particular, it must work for the real number zero. So we must have zero plus zero equals zero. And then by axiom five, Every real number has a negative, so zero has a negative. And we have that zero plus the negative of zero is equal to zero. So, since these two guys are both equal to the same thing, they must be equal to each other. And from here, we're in a position to apply the cancellation law of addition. So, applying the cancellation law of addition, we can cancel out the zeros. And so we're left with the negative of zero is equal to zero. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. Now from experience, we also know that zero is the only real number with this property. That is, zero is the only real number with the property that zero is equal to the negative of itself. But actually, at this point, that isn't obvious. And when I say it's not obvious, it's not obvious in the sense that axioms one through seven are not enough to prove that zero is the only real number with this property. We're actually going to need the next couple axioms, the order axioms, in order to prove that. The reason why is because axioms one through seven tell us that the set of real numbers form a field. But there are fields with elements in it, with the property that the element is equal to the negative of itself, but that element is not equal to zero. For example, if we consider the field Z2, Z2 actually only has two elements in it, zero and one. But in Z2, one is equal to negative one. So we have an element equal to the negative of itself but it's not equal to zero. So at this point, because we have only been working with axioms one through seven for the real numbers, that means the real numbers could be Z2 for all we know. Once we start working with axioms eight and nine, the order axioms, that will no longer be the case because we will be able to prove that zero is the only real number with this property. And let's actually see how a sketch of a proof would go that zero is the only real number that satisfies this property. Well, suppose we have another real number that satisfies this property. I'll call it S. So we have negative S equals to S. From here, we want to show that S is equal to zero. So that will show zero uniquely satisfies this property. Well, from here, we can add S on both sides to obtain zero equals S plus S. But from here, s is equal to s times 1, so we have 0 equal to s times 1 plus s times 1. But then by the distributive law, this is really just s times 1 plus 1. And for shorthand, we can write 1 plus 1 as 2. So this is really just 2 times s. And clearly, 0 is equal to 2 times 0. And then by the cancellation law of multiplication, your instinct is probably telling you to divide two on both sides. But this is where we reach problems. 
how do we know that 2 is not equal to 0? Because in fact, axioms 1 through 7 is not enough to prove 2 is not equal to 0. Because, again, if we're working with only axioms 1 through 7, then the set of real numbers could be z2 for all we know. But in z2, 2 is equal to 0. When we start working with the order axioms, we'll be able to say 2 is not equal to 0, and that will justify us to allow us to cancel out 2, so we'll obtain s equals 0. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.